Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to be seeing how many gallons per hour this 1100 gallon per hour bilge pump actually puts out. Now I've heard that these really drop their flow rate when you put them through a hose or when you provide any sort of lift whatsoever, like even two feet above the water level, they, they really drop. So why is it important to do a proper test? Um, there have been a few sluice studies over the years, so I'm just going to point you over to my whiteboard here and I'll, I'll let you know kind of what we're dealing with. So there's been some sluice studies done over the years and the first one of note is 1978, James Hamilton. They had a really well set up scientific sort of a, a setup. They ran the same material, they measured the gold exactly and essentially what they were doing was they were conveyor belt feeding. Um, they did a bunch of different tests, but in test number four, I think that was one of the, one of the good ones, for fine gold recovery, they did 225 pounds per minute of material. And that works out to roughly four yards an hour, four to six yards an hour, depending on what a yard weighs and if it's wet or if it's dry. But that's like a lot of material to go over a 12 inch wide sluice. That kind of blew my mind a little bit. So I'm like, okay, well, they can't have done that well recovering fine gold running four yards an hour with 160 US gallons per minute in a 12 inch sluice. Uh, at an inch and five eighths of slope, expanded metal over moss. Um, the 35 to 48 mesh gold, which about 50% of Alberta gold, depending on the location, it's 60, 40 or 40, 60, I forget, but about half your gold is above 50 mesh, sort of between that 30 to 50 mesh, and then the other half is below 50 mesh. Um, they got 93% capture rate in the first 24 inch section. So they had a bunch of 24 inch sections with slick plates in between and they would sort of see like what percentage was in the first and the second and the third. 93%, not bad. The 65 to 100 mesh, they got 84% in 24 inches and they did a, a final test where they, they got some stuff that was finer than 100 mesh, sort of that flat cornflake gold and they didn't do as well there. But that's where we come to the pop and sun sluice. Um, if you wanna read this, just Google James Hamilton sluice study, and uh, it's actually kind of an interesting thing what they did. Pop and Sun sluice came out of, I believe, Nome, Alaska, and it is a, a very fine expanded metal over miner's moss, and sort of the two things of note here would be screened to 5 sixteenths, which is just a hair over that quarter inch screen that I like to use here in Alberta, uh, inch and a half slope, 80 US gallons per minute, 80 pounds a minute feed rate, which is roughly two yards an hour or about 10 shovels per minute. That's, that's feeding pretty good. And they were able to capture 100% of all their pickers and everything there. And then for the fine gold, it drops off a little. So for that fine gold, this is what they went with. Inch and a half slope, uh, same screen and everything, 20 US gallons per minute over a 12 inch sluice. So that's not a ton of flow, um, sort of 20 to 30 but in like the little chart they publish, it's 20 gallons per minute, 40 pounds a minute feed rate for material, which is about one yard an hour, five shovels a minute. And they were able to get 95% of the 100 to 200 mesh. So that's not even the 50 mesh plus stuff that I'm finding in Alberta, but the, the really, really fine part of what I'm getting, 100 to 200 mesh, 95% flat cornflake gold. And that's, I think it was in a 48 inch sluice. And they got 85% of all the 200 to 325 mesh particles of gold. So that's kind of the gold standard these days, but again, for a 12 inch sluice, one yard per hour feed rate is pretty slow for like a machine operation. It's perfect for a guy shoveling at the river. Now I would set something up like this, maybe in a beach box being 24 inches wide, which allows you to shovel a little bit quicker into it and it, it'll help it deal with that surge a little bit better. But that's, that's the pop and sun numbers. Now, the reason I'm doing this test today to see how much gallons per hour is actually coming out of this bilge pump, the utmost 1100 gallon per hour bilge pump, uh, it's one of the most common bilge pumps that you can find on Amazon. It's cheap, you can get them on eBay, dime a dozen. Uh, I wish dime a dozen. But that 1100 gallons per hour would be 18 gallons per minute which means that that bilge pump would run a 12 inch wide sluice in the you know beach box fine gold recovery setup. But I'm very skeptical that I'm getting the full 18 gallons per minute by the time it goes through about a five and a half foot hose and 
is lifted about 20 inches off the water's edge. So I'm gonna see exactly how many gallons per minute actually come out of this so that I, I can figure out how wide of a sluice that bilge pump at full tilt can actually run this pop and sun style of sluice and we'll see where we go from there. But today we're just gonna get the numbers. So let's go see how we do. So your setup today is of course, this 1100 gallon per hour bilge pump, it's I think an inch and an eighth on the outside and seven eighths of an inch on the inside. So it works out that this is a washing machine uh, hose. And so on this end, you cut off a few of these little rubber things and it fits on perfectly. And then on the other end over here, it goes into a, I've just got an aluminum tube here where it's strapped in to feed my sluice. This bucket is 10 liters if I fill it right to this little lip here. And I actually checked that by filling this one liter bottle. So I know exactly how much is in a one liter bottle. These are pretty standard. Filled this up 10 times. That's exactly where the 10 liter mark is. And I'm basically going to time how long it takes to fill this bucket with this sluice running. And that's gonna tell me, I can calculate that out. Uh, and I will do that calculation and write it on the screen here exactly what the actual gallons per hour or gallons per minute is of this pump running through a sluice like this in a real world situation. It's a 20 inch lift through five and a half feet of this washing machine hose. This is a pretty standard hose. So this is what a lot of people out there with this pump are actually getting for gallons per minute or gallons per hour. I have this Jackery power bank here. It's got a 12 volt outlet and that 12 volt outlet is actually putting out uh, 13 and a half volts or 13.48 volts I tested with a multimeter. So this is like a charged lead acid battery. And I also, as a test, I'm gonna over volt it. So this is an 18 volt, just your typical lithium tool battery. This thing is going to spin that motor a lot faster and it's going to basically produce more gallons per minute. So I'm curious what it's almost 20 volts if you actually measure it with a multimeter and 18 volts is like nominal or whatever. So we're gonna test gallons per hour with one of these as well because depending on how long these last, this could be a really good way if you built a little backpack sluice, one of these batteries here, I would assume a six amp hour battery would last an hour and a half, but I'll do some amp tests and, and let you know how that would actually work. Um, but that could be a really good thing to bring out with you if you just wanted to go test a place for an hour or two. Um, and you wanted a little bit more water flow through that bilge pump. So let's get right to it. It's 49 watts draw, and let's see exactly how long it takes to fill a 10 liter bucket. Okay, I don't have a timer, so I'm gonna use my editing software to tell me exactly how long this takes, and then I'll, I'll write it in. Here we go, three, two, one, under. And stop. Next, we're gonna test this battery and we'll see what the flow looks like for one. Sounds different. Fair bit more flow. Let's get some uh, numbers on this and then I'll I'll see if I still have my little piece of electronics, I can get you an amps reading so we can see how many watts it's drawing off of that because it should be more energy it's, it's using right now. Okay, test number one with the 18 volt battery. Three, two, one, start. And stop. So next up, I've got a piece of electronics. I'm just going to see if I can put that in line here and see how many amps this draws and then I can calculate how long a battery like this will last out in the field. So my electronics are, are pretty janky. Uh, it was drawing roughly eight amps at that uh, 20 volts, which means about 150, 160 watts of, of draw, which means that this guy here would only last about 45 minutes. And one of these guys here would only last about half an hour if you were running wide open off of an 18 volt tool battery. So maybe, not the best idea unless you're looking for really short term use. But I'll get all these numbers calculated and then we'll see what we wind up with. So what did we learn today? Uh, I learned that my 1100 gallon per hour bilge pump actually in a real world situation with five and a half feet of hose and a 20 inch lift above the water surface 
will give me about 588 gallons per hour. So about half of what they're advertising because of all the hoses and how it's all set up. So that equates to 9.8 gallons per minute or 10 gallons per minute is exactly half of what the Pop and Son sluice study was using. 20 gallons per minute per foot of sluice width means that if your sluice is only six inches wide, 10 gallons per minute is perfect. I also know that if you overvolt to 18 volts, hoping to get a little more power, the wattage at 12 volts was about 50 watts, whereas at 18 volts, it was drawing over 150 watts, more than three times the energy to go from 600 gallons per hour to 800 gallons per hour. So if you really need a little bit of extra juice, I recommend just getting a size up of bilge pump rather than overvolting this one. It just wasn't very efficient. You might be able to use like a pulse width modulator to be able to use your tool batteries out in the field without just burning through energy like that, but you would want to dim it down a little bit. Now, how much can you actually process in a six inch wide pop and sun sluice? The full size unit could do a yard an hour. And so that six inch sluice could do half a yard an hour, which is roughly 20 buckets of classified material in an hour. Now, if you're at the beach, it's 20 buckets, three minutes a bucket, off you go. However, if you're digging bank run gravel, you may classify off 50% of your material. So 40 buckets or a full yard of bank run might only be 20 buckets of classified material, meaning that you can actually process about a yard an hour in some situations just using an electric six inch high banker. These are your settings, inch and a half slope, 20 gallons per minute per foot of sluice width, or 10 gallons per minute for our six inch sluice. And, and you're getting incredible results for this fine gold. Uh, just classify to 5 16ths or less, and you're off to the races. I was kind of surprised at, according to these tests, steady feed rate and everything, how much volume of material you can actually process in a little six inch sluice. And I'm interested in something super lightweight and packable to bring into situations where I don't want to bring my pump, maybe I can't access with the jet boat and I want to hike in, but still do a good job of capturing fine gold and that flower gold. My plan going forwards, if I was to build a box like this, I might go to a five inch box instead of a six inch box just to make sure that I have enough water flow. And then I guess rather than working right next to the river's edge, sometimes your pay streaks right up a gravel bar, I'd bring a tub and sort of recirculate and then just five gallon bucket the water up to uh, get that recirculating system going because you're not gonna be able to use an electric pump like this to pump you know, 20, 30 feet up the bank to where you're actually working. In that case, I'd just bring my gasoline pump. But even with the gas pump, I could carry that in one hand and carry a little six inch high banker or six inch sluice in the other hand and get a lot of work done with something that's like no trouble at all to pack into the bush. So we'll see sort of what I wind up making out of all this stuff, but hopefully the information was useful to you. Thanks for watching everyone. And as always, until next time, cheers.